Hey wonderful people, good morning from Dhaka, Bangladesh. Hopefully everybody is doing good. Uh, so today uh, I want to do actually a requested video, request video that was done by a couple of my group members. They asked me, uh, Brother Joy or Joy Bhai, how did it uh, change? I said, which one? He said, uh, how did the trend of fragrances change from before 90s and after 90s? You know, like the back in the era, 80s, 70s, 90s, they used to have a different uh, style of fragrances. They had different kind of notes breakdown or different kind of smell altogether. So back in the time, fragrance smelled very differently from today. What we have today, it's a bit modern and the trend has changed in many ways. So I thought like this is going to be a very interesting topic and I didn't do so much research, but I have looked for some of my older collections. Like uh, these are fragrances I bought in recent times and maybe some of them in the last three, four, five years. But I'm going to show you at least about 10 plus fragrances to give you some examples of different kind of fragrances uh, to give you idea like what we people used to wear back then so my scent of the morning it's from the oldest time i'm wearing siki eternity for men and the moment i put it on in my hand i just knew you know i'm having like uh, my morning coffee and eternity and it's kind of making me feel like let's do this video so later today i have one review coming up for you it's a real review uh, of one of my favorite fragrance from house of mfk my brother gave it to me uh, to review this is called aqua vita forte from mfk house mason francisco john so i will do that later today of course that review is coming up but let me do this video so basically in short what the topic covers is uh, how back in our times like we look back like people like us look back now i'm what 38 so almost 40 years four decades so i was born in 81 uh, people from back in the time 71 81 they would have good memories of this kind of fragrances in their journey of course i have plenty more to show but these are the some of the ones that i'm gonna show otherwise the video would be so big and i'll tell you how did they smell differently of different genre i chosen some from uh, powerhouse some from fresh aquatic some sweet clubbing this kind of fragrances okay and i'll show you those verses what you have today and how did the culture and the whole trend change right you get it i guess right so first of all back in the time fragrances few things were different okay i remember as far as i remember there's a good thing of being a little bit old uh, i do not remember in recent years so much what happened but i do have good memories of my childhood or my school days i have very good memories of those i remember them like their story in back in my head those are very precious to me so back in the time people used to smell differently most people you use uh, body sprays we did not know much about fragrances at the time we used to use gillette uh, like axe uh some of the other body sprays like old spice uh, aftershave our dad used to use those and they used to have perfumes but i would never see them like my dad would always put them in the locker or something so they used to smell very masculine fragrances back in the time smell very masculine spicy old school and powerhouse sort of fragrances also something they would wear in nature that would be like a reminiscent of those times you know men back in the time would be very bold and gutsy and not very urban uh, yeah they're urban but uh, they're not more like metrosexual man back in the time was very much like you know manly masculine men men would be like really like with a cigar you know like the tv series you said the fall guy a team you know macgyver so that was the era for us so i grew up in those times so sean connery you know <laughs> these kind of people uh, they were rough and tough guys so fragrance would have like if you hear the word tobacco it's not just tobacco it used to be a lot more if you hear the note pineapple or citrus or aquatic it's a lot more than that everything smelled different so let me go one by one uh, first of all let me show you this one my father used to use ck obsession i think it was uh, released in 90s i think somewhere but he used to have like bottles uh, back in bangladesh and I used to smell this and back in the time they used to have atomizer here, built-in atomizer instead of cap. These are more modern versions. So CK Obsession is uh, one of their finest. You know, just now I showed Eternity, I'll show you again. But CK, one of their best offerings and most complex and beautiful, spicy leather. I get leather from this. I get uh, kind of like different things, different times. So this is very masculine. And one of the specialties of this fragrance was this was uh, used recent times to catch tigers or tigress rather. Uh, in India, I guess, because they the tigress cannot resist the smell of obsession. So there must be something special in it, right? I'm not joking, by the way. Go Google that shit, you know, like uh, they use this as a trap. 
So this fragrance is so masculine. Let me just tell you, apart from the nose breakdown, when you smell it, you see the bottle shape, you see already it's an old school classic. It's like Western film, right? Uh, it's like, uh, I don't know, like horsemen, Western cowboys and stuff like that. It's very rugged and very classy looking bottle. Women also have this kind of uh, fragrance, women's side, but a little bit different bottle. But I get very masculine, spicy, this kind of notes, you know, the up top, whatever you have, the opening top, if there was a citrus, you don't find the citrus no more but you smell this and you put it on and you immediately will be transported back if you lived in those times you'll be transported back in those times like you used to watch terminator you used to watch predator uh, those are my favorite films back in the time and die hard <laughs> uh, bruce willis so if you smell this vampire in brooklyn a lot of films i can remember teenage mutant ninja turtles the first film that came out i had audio cassettes like uh, video cassettes and stuff we used to rent from our clubs and stuff so nowadays people don't know what are you talking about kids will be like video clubs tape cassettes what are those yeah if you lived on those times you would know like we did not have much our life was very simplistic no mobile phones um we used to have this big ass phones with cords uh like orange green colored phones and you have to dial the thing if you go retro phones you'll see so it, this fragrance remind me of those times we used to have a lot of time we had a lot of uh, like uh, fields to play football, outdoor sports. We were very much into, uh, as much as indoor, we used to be more into outdoor sports. Like, I'll give you ideas. That's what, how you relate with the fragrances. That's how memories come back. We used to have badminton, cricket, football. We used to play this and then we'd get a lot of injuries and we'd have like, you know, get very involved in physical activities and sports outdoors when we were in school. So this fragrance reminds me of that, you know, back in the time. Obsession is one of them. Next one I'll show you is uh, kind of like from spicy. Let's go something green. Pakoraban Excess. So Pakoraban Excess, this one is my memory was from my university days, like uh, 2000, uh, 2000s, you know, 2001 to that time. Okay. My friend uh, from Dubai, his name is Yusuf. Uh, he is he was son of, son of an ambassador. His father was an ambassador or high commissioner in different countries, Saudi, uh, I think, uh, Afghanistan, different countries they used to travel. So he used to study with me in the university, one of my best friends. So he used to have like huge collection of perfumes. They were rich <laughs> and they used to drive like, before he was like six or seven, they used to have their own cars, you know, like Mercedes, BMW, Jaguar. So for him, perfume was a regular thing. If you would spray like crazy Arabs, the spray, this episode might run a little bit long, but I'll just show you. Uh, he went to Sogo, the mall, Sogo in Malaysia, those who are Malaysian or been to Malaysia, they would know. And he bought this with me. I remember that we used to be a bigger uh, writing in there. So that was the first batch of excess. So excess people say create Himalaya. They uh, were inspired by this fragrance and they made their own uh, excess. But this fragrance was huge. Everywhere the brands, you know, the, the, the advertising, back in the time advertising was so different, you know. And you look at this advertising, uh, posters and stuff you automatically want to buy because the way they put the pictures and they look at these bottles these are like badass looking bottles you know i love this bottle i got it just for those memories sake and it's fantastic it has this something like a this fragrance is very herbaceous uh, very uh, kind of like cooling green uh, nature like and you don't smell this kind of dna anymore but if you really want something like creed himalaya and you want it on a budget excess would be the one so this is how fragrance used to be back in the time you know that has a lot of flankers afterwards like black excess is more like modern version but no nonetheless then sick eternity for men it has been reformulated to death no doubt about it this fragrance it's soapy green vetiver and it has a lot of other notes but what i really get is very comforting scent it's like barbershop sort of and it's very uh, mature grown-up kind of smell that you wear in office you could smell this in 90s everywhere even nowadays men who are excuse me their 30s 40s they still have backup bottles of 200 ml i have seen uh, this fragrance doesn't smell anymore like this modern fragrances but people who lived in this era they would cherish it so vetiver was big in that time you know like green fragrance were big in that time so that's what i'm trying to say that men used to smell like this okay eternity Next, I'll show you, you recognize this. This is like Curve, okay, for men by Liz Claiborne. I reviewed it recently and I got, I think, uh, I don't know if this is a vintage bottle or not, 
but this is 125 ml. I got a partial bottle. Uh, what this fragrance smells like? It's more like uh, think of Abercrombie and Fitch Fierce, Mont Blanc Legend. Those are the modern version of this one. This was released way before those, I think. And this one has a note of pineapple. So when you hear the word pineapple, automatically, oh, Aventus. Okay, nowadays everybody would know Aventus because younger folks, they grew up with Aventus. But this one, the pineapple doesn't smell like it. Another fragrance I'll show you has also pineapple is Lapidus Purum by Ted Lapidus. These pineapples, you cannot pinpoint single note. Oh, that's pineapple. That's juicy or smoky barbecuing pineapple, right? You would smell these, you'd be like, what are these fragrances? <laughs> and uh, this is like a powerhouse and this is more like a fresh synthetic sort of a soapy kind of a scent but both of them have notes of pineapple in this so back in the time these two were considered the Aventus of the era their era yes that's right and this fragrance uh, I think is a more newer version they used to have a uh, older formulation those uh, would last all day okay these are like a fragrance man would smell like spicy you know like a, a kind of animalic there were notes like uh, I think uh, what are the notes uh, uh, see <laughs> getting old uh, no no privileges at all but uh, like animalic notes you know like uh, hold on I'm trying to remember because I woke up the information is not really coming so fast but anyway if I go on I will remember so oak moss yes oak moss castorium or uh, you know this this uh, notes that they are like being controlled by Ifra right nowadays and uh, they are not being allowed to use in fragrance anymore like especially oak moss this, this fragrance especially would have those. So they would give you huge longevity and projection. The whole day you smell like it, but it smells quite powdery, especially this one. And it smells a little bit like 90s. Even the bottle is not modern anymore. And Curve would smell fresh, pineapple-y, kind of, uh, of Abercrombie and Fitch Fierce, as well as, uh, like nowadays, what? Mont Blanc Legend. If you love those, you definitely would see this is the older formulation of that. On the dry down, they smell pretty similar. So these are some of the other ones. Then Azaropurum. This is the semi-vintage bottle, you guys know. I hardly reach for it because I saved this for special days and winter. So this fragrance is very spicy and this is like a typical barbershop. What is barbershop? Something that reminds you of shaving foam, being in a barbershop. This is one of those classic ones from Azaro. So fragrance nowadays, this... Pakorban Purum, these two are my, my two of my favorites. Uh, this is more like green, vanilla. It's think of like Eros minus uh, the mint and apple. This one has vanilla in the dry down, but opening is very green, right? So these fragrances have beautiful longevity, especially Pakorban Purum, if you buy this. This one, remember like what I said in my review. Uh, if you go up there in the mountains and it's a little bit cloudy and when you wake up, there is dew everywhere. And it's kind of like cool weather, but it's not really winter. And you're leaving surrounded like by a lot of trees and you see like there's water going on like streams coming down uh, this is the kind of fragrance in the out there in the nature it smells so good for at least eight to ten hours right so back in the time these fragrances used to be like this barber shoppy green and masculine so i think these are the trends i'm showing you and i'll tell you how it changed then i'll show you some more Drakkar noir kuros you don't smell these fragrances DNA no more in the modern new releases. Let's show you some fresh ones. Let me show you two, three fresh ones. Okay, first of all, CK1, Our Time. This is a symbolic fragrance. You know, when it was released, everywhere Calvin Klein was campaigning for this. Men, women, we both can wear it. Jeans, t-shirt, uh, youth, crazy era. Like there was a time for, uh, you know, like, I think Kate Moss was the face for this one. Wow, what a beautiful lady. Uh, she was the model. I used to collect all those posters and uh, wallpapers. Very symbolic. Now this is a more modern version. Then I will show you Polo Blue. Somewhere between uh, after CK1, our era. This fragrance smells fantastic. It did, didn't, did not get dated in my opinion. Try Polo Blue. Then I would say Cool Water. You would know this one. Then let me show you some other. Like tobacco based scents, nowadays tobacco is very modern, people like the note of tobacco, but Versace Dreamer, this was back in the time of Gianni Versace's uh, era. One of the most unique, gorgeous, long lasting, all year round kind of fragrance, very mysterious, okay, very mysterious and wonderful bottle. I still have uh, like dreams about this bottle because when I 
did not have it, I used to wonder about this beautiful looking bottle. So this is one. Then the clubbing wise, people used to use Dunhill Desire Red. Last one, I'll show you one, one very unique fragrance. That is Fahrenheit by Dior. This fragrance is the best of the era for the reason being this fragrance, even if it's released today, the concept, concept behind this, gasoline, leather, florals, and uh, kind of like green, uh, outdoor sea motoral oil kind of thing, it would be a big hit even today. It's the most unique smelling fragrance ever. So it, it never got dated like the rest of them. So yeah, seeing all these fragrances, the conclusion is nowadays, modern notes are tonka bean. They have a lot of boozy notes. Uh, uh, let's say nowadays, what else is uh, like fresh fragrances like Neroli and uh, Mint, okay, Iris. Uh, let me look at some of the fragrances, uh, leather-based fragrances. Now it is more, more like fresh, sweet. The trend is sweet, you know, people like sweet fragrances. People like something that would project a lot, but it would be easy to love. And some people wear fragrances that are more metrosexual, that doesn't smell exactly like a manly masculine man, but it smells like, you know, like a lipstick, like Diorum Intense or uh, Valentino Humo Intense, like a chocolate. Back in the time, people wouldn't smell like Valentino Humo Intense. They would smell like, yes, X, uh, what is the X uh, fragrance that, the, the chocolate-based fragrance, X, uh, you guys know what I'm talking about, the most popular one. I have it somewhere in the can and stuff. So, yeah, but people didn't smell like sweet. Dudes didn't smell like very sweet. They smelled more greenish, oak moss, uh, heavy uh, fragrances, a lot of complexity in a perfume nowadays fragrances are more see-through less complexity you smell it you know what you want and what you like cardamom nowadays uh, so barbershop fragrances are not that popular anymore among new kids uh, what's popular is sweet clubbing um, one night stands that sort of so dior savage fresh fragrances so they are easy to get compliments so i'm not trying to say that uh, fragrance trend became more dumber <laughs> like many others would say or uh, they got uh, how to say, uh, like I mentioned, one night stand, there's no depth, but I really feel, you know, I don't want to brag about my time because everyone's time is special, you know, like the decades or the years the youngsters are living in, they're going to be someday look back in their earlier days, they'll say those are glorious times, now times are shit, you know, worlds are getting worse place. Everybody would say that, but to everybody, their childhood, everyone, like their people they grew up with, their memories, all is special to them. So our memories are with these older fragrances. People's younger kids, they will remember Dior Sauvage as the OG, right? So that's how the uh, notes and the trend changed. People, life became more high-tech, mobile phones, gadgets, and now you're gonna get even more advanced cars. We did not have so many cars on our roads. Uh, back in the time, people used to have like, those who are really rich could afford a car. Now it is affordability, it's a good thing. Everybody can afford a car. So I think every era is special, every single era of fragrance is special, but uh, I like to go back in different times, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, I rotate my fragrance. I think if you do that, you'll enjoy the spectrum a little bit more, right? Uh, and you try to see fragrances like, so let me show one last example, Aramis, one classic fragrance, okay? Uh, look at the bottle. If you see this standing in some shelf, you'll know this is James Bond, uh, perhaps a uh, like Roger Moore or uh, who else, Sean Connery or uh, Pierce Brosnan. Even though Pier Pierce Brosnan is a bit younger folk compared to them, but this is very James Bond-like, right? People nowadays do not know who is James Bond. <laughs> we used to watch James Bond like, you know, like stealing our dad's tape or they used to watch like those are adult films, you know, like grown-up films and kids shouldn't watch it because there are a lot of scenes and stuff like that in there. But uh, Era misses another fragrance from back in the time. So do try out anything that appeals to you because if you get bored of modern new fragrances try, try out some of the older ones you'll find something interesting in anything and it's always nice to learn about new fragrances right so thanks for watching thanks for listening i hope i could make some sense and i think uh, for a more complex sense nowadays we have more uh, now that even the trend is oud back in the time nowhere no one used to wear oud they used to wear perfume oils so yeah this is how that changed but i think every single change or era decade was special everybody have a nice day and have a beautiful fragrant day and make it a productive day i'll see you soon with the aqua beta forte review later today bye bye